it over to Zoom. And I have a different screen over here, so I'll just follow and see if it works. So now we are actually live. Oh. Yeah. Yes. And we have audio. Now we are actually live. That's cool. Stuff works. I like when stuff works. <laughs> so. <laughs> And Kasten, if you want to do yeah. an intro in Danish, we have 10 people waiting. Yeah, okay. Men um, så vil jeg gerne sige velkommen til de uh, folk, der uh, er med på, på linjen her. Det er første gang, vi prøver det, så er jeg sådan lidt i tvivl om, uh, hvad jeg skal kalde det her streaming arrangement. Men uh, nu prøver vi også det, uh, og uh, uh, det er jo super spændende. Øhm, men først så vil jeg lige sige øhm, tak til øh, Nordisk Digital Lab for, at øh, de har gjort det muligt, at vi kan vise øh, så vi Borgs billeder øh, på øh, det gamle rådhus i Tiste. Så der håber jeg bestemt, at de kommer ind og, og ser den flotte udstilling, der er derinde. De hænger der sammen med øh, Skarthof Kraftlands billeder, og øh, på fredag kommer der flere øh, billeder op derinde, og vi starter vores... Øh, Øh, vores kantudstilling med en fanisering fredag kl. halv fire. Øh, også tak til Fujifilm for, at vi overhovedet kan lave øh, øh, kantfestival og øh, til Kunstforeningen Det Nye Kastet for øh, at være med i samarbejdet omkring øh, øh, streaming her. Det er faktisk dem, der har opfordret mig til at, 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 at lave det her. Øh, næste event efter det her, det bliver en... Øh, der sælger vi nogle billetter til et øh, lille arrangement, vi har på Tiste Bryghus. Så hold lige øje med vores øh, hjemmeside. Så kommer der en mulighed for at, at, at starte op på Tiste Bryghus øh, næste fredag. Øhm, nu vil jeg gerne sige velkommen til øh, Jakob og til Sabi, og det gør sig lige på engelsk. Uh, hello and welcome to you, uh, Jakob uh, Køller. I'm very glad you would help with this. Uh, because I'm lost. And... Uh, very much welcome to you, Sadi. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, now I will, uh, with you, Jakob, take over here from this and look for, forward to see Sadi's pictures. Yes, uh, first of all, I speak also Danish, so if you have questions, I come from Denmark, so if you have questions in the chat, so send them in Danish, so I can also send them to Sadi. So, and first of all, welcome to, yeah, Savi also, we just had a small talk uh, before this. Let's see if I can podcast now a bit later, so we don't have to see his yellow box. Uh, but otherwise, Savi, Savi is a photographer, we decided to call him today, that works with photography and videography, or makes photographies out of video videography, uh, based out of uh, Spain, and he has some really exciting work to show. So. I don't have anything else to say. Savi, I didn't, I forget, forgot to ask you, do you want questions during your presentation or after? Because then if you want it after, I'll just collect them. No, oh, maybe after, yeah. Okay, so so feel free to ask questions and I'll just collect them and we'll have a Q&A, short Q&A afterwards. Cool. Okay. Savi. Cool, thank you, Jacob. And thank you, Karsten, for inviting me to this festival. Last year, I was only one day to go to the festival, but it was canceled one day before, unfortunately, for, for COVID. So this year, I will, it's not possible for, for personal reasons because I'm going to be father the next, the next days. So it's not possible for me to, to come to Denmark, unfortunately. I really wish to go. But what I'm going to do today is introduce uh, my project and myself um, and my main project that is Ornithographies that um, maybe you know, it's a project that the aims is to show the beauty of the bird flies. So for that, um, I'm going to start with a presentation, a little introduction of how, how I came up with the idea and and some picture and what is behind these pictures and finally we are going to end with a short film and after the short film um you can do the questions that you decide 
Yeah. And, and also, I want to tell you sorry for my English. I'm working on that. It's challenging for me, but I try to do myself. Uh, the, I try to do the best as I can. So thank you for the patience. I hope you understand me. And OK, I'm going to show the screen with the presentation. Jacob, it's OK? Yeah, yeah, just go. I will just adjust the screen. Okay. So you see the... Okay, so the project is called Ornithographies, as I tell you, and well, the I want to show you the the, the this travel from when I see the sky before, when I see something like this before, and what happened until now that for me. I see the sky like this. So what happened in between? How I, I get with the idea, how I, how I do that, and what I like to do that, no? So um, basically, I study geology and photography, and I was been working in the fashion advertisement industry for 15 years. I used to work with other people's pictures normally in post-production, like an, uh, also uh, like a lighting assistant. Uh, also I give, um, I was professor in photography school, but always I was working, working with other people's pictures. So I really wish to do a personal project and it took me like 10 years to, re to realize what I want to talk and what I want to do. It took me many times because um, I try until I, I get to the idea that if I want to speak with so, uh, about something, it's what, about something that for me was special. It made me, a, me a, a little special. And, and what I think it was special between my friends and my family is because I was the weirdo that I always have looking at the sky, looking at the birds, looking in the floor to the paw prints, trying to recognize the scats in the trees. So I, I realized that if I want to do a personal project, I have to do a personal project based in photography, in, in nature, sorry. And, and, and for me, it's important to put some innovation and research in, in, the, in my project. So everything begins when I was like here, a pretty teenager, no? that I do a long walks with, with my grandfather because I grew up in Delta de Llobregat, that it's next to Barcelona. It's a wetland area, it's a delta. So then I start my passion for nature. Um, since that, all the passions come with me. Uh, as, as I told before, when I was looking for a project, I was looking for a project relating with, about nature. But there are many ways to approach nature. And, and I, I, I make a lot of, lot of rounds thinking about, oh, what I could talk about that it's nobody has done before. Or, or something that I could make it personal. So one day walking in a field, looking for the floor, I look for a, a track in the floor and I think about myself, what kind of tracks could leave the birds in the sky if that was possible? And then I imagine these lines in the sky, I think, oh, it could be great to make it visible, no? And, and have somebody have done before because as you know, when you have great ideas, the most common is somebody has done before. No? So and then I, send, I start the research and I find nothing about that. So well, the next step is, okay, how can I do it? And, and when, when I get my, in my mind is, okay, what I, what I need to do is to stitch, if, if I want to show several seconds into a single image, this doesn't work with a, with a long exposure because the, the sky is brighter than the bear. So if you do a long exposure in, a, in, in the day, what will happen is the bear is going to disappear in the picture. So what I have to do is to take the, the, the I realize that to do that, what I have to do is to take many pictures per second and stitch it in a single image. And this is what exactly did in the 19th century with the chronophotography, um, Mybridge and Marais. Mybridge find this 
solution. It's this kind of, of, of sequence. But, but what I was looking for is more close to the Marais picture, no? Marais, thanks to the, to the um, dark background and, uh, and the fast shutter, uh, they could show this sequence. So for the first time, people could see this hidden movement that it's impossible to recognize for a, in, in a naked eye, no? So thanks to these to this fast pictures, people could know exactly how the position of the body of birds or, and other animals was no, in motion. But for the big difference from this picture and what I want to do, of course, is, it's two centuries of different technologies. But for, for me, the big difference is I don't want to show the position of the body of the birds. In, in its, in, I don't want to make a description of the position of the body. I don't want to be to do something that you could recognize the bird and say, okay, now it's the, the winds are up, the winds are down. No, and I, I don't want to, to do that. What I want to do is that you lose the, the, the shape of the bird and what you are looking at, it's a completely new shape. And this completely new shape, you, you can do it if you take more pictures per second. So thanks to take more pictures per second, one picture is overlapped to the next one, not like in this image. So you could not recognize most of the time the bird. And what it appears, it's a completely new organic shape. So I was interested in that. And this completely new organic shape that it's not a bird recognizable most of the times on that, no? So to do that, this is the first test. Of course, the first test used to be really tacky. It's a, it's a it's a toy that I threw through through the through the um, to the room. So I realized, okay, I could do that, but sometimes it looks great, sometimes it doesn't look great. I point my camera to the balcony in 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 my flat in Barcelona. So for that time, that it's a spring, in like eight or nine years ago. This is nine years ago. Uh, there are swift. So this is, this is the first footage that I took from 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 birds. And, and well, it's quite exciting because, okay, I, I realized that I could do that, but, but at that point, I was not sure the potential that it had because here are some lines that it's, it's cool, but it's, it's not wow. No? So the first stage, it was like eight years ago that, okay, I could do that. But at that time I use, um, what I'm not tell you is if you want to take many pictures per second, a photo camera, a still camera, it's not enough. So you need to use a video camera, no? Video cameras that could record at the slow motion and the highest uh, resolution as you can, because at the end, what I need is a still picture that I print in, in big sizes, no? But at the beginning, I only could have with myself as really slow resolution uh, video cameras. So at the beginning, this is the first image that I will take in outside in the nature. And it was uh, doing a um, ornithological trip um, in the sea to looking for seabirds. And coming back to the to the port, I I, re I record a really simple footage. It is seagull following follow the boat, no. But but what happened with this footage and that it's so simple that it's when 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 I stitch all the frames together, the image that appears to me for me was so new was fun, and so shocking. Then what I see that this image, I, re I really uh, realized that I found the project I was looking the, the last 10 years. And I found the project that finally I could invest time to make it a proper project. But what happened in this first stage that the resolution was really poor. So um, I, I, I do like a hobby, but not take really seriously when I go to travel, for example, here in Uganda, so I take this footage from cormorants, or for example, this is a, a group of starlings, but it is this balcony of, of my, my last studio in the center of Barcelona. But it's something that I, I was not planning to, to, to publish because the resolution is really poor. So, uh, well, and at that time I was really busy, busy with my post-production study, working a lot of hours, but, but I realized that, okay, you have found the, the project that you was, you was looking for for years, 
and 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 you are not investing times and what happened is somebody done before you and published before you you will get really upset so everybody tell me that so i take seriously and so i invest time and money to rent proper camera that could record in 4k in raw format so and then i invest the time that needs a professional uh, project no so six years ago i started with this new stage and and well you can see the difference because a similar image but but before and this is the after no there, there are a jump in, in terms of resolution and, and it's pretty much the same image but well it um, i think it's important that the end it's 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 have a enough level no uh, also for me eh, because to get confidence to show to the magazines and 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 magazines don't tell me, oh, this is not enough wood for printing or what else, no? So I start, I start uh, more seriously with this project. So at the beginning for me, everything was really new. It was really exciting because everything, every new shape was different. And this is the most simple image that you can get. It's a simple, uh, three simple seagulls flying across the frame. So what you can see, of course, is the flapping no? up and down, up and down, and it's what it's a reason that appears this wave. But of course the birds fly in really different ways and, and the morphology of the birds are really different. So for example, and this is a similar image also from um, a flapping bird. This is a um, roller, um, European roller. But I was interested in, in look different shapers. So it's one, for example, this is a group of white storks uh, uprising with hot thermal current. And in this case, there are those, not this wave. This means that they, they, these birds in, in this moment, they are not flapping. So they put their wings straight and they use the hot thermal currents to uprise, no? Up, and, and in this way, safe, safe energy, as you should know, and you, and you know for sure. No? So I started my research. In this case, it's a kind of leader crowd that it's called a red toad. And, and, and in this here, they are not taking hot thermal carols. It's a kind of social behavior. And, and it's quite exciting because when you find a complex behavior in the field, no? in this case, hundreds of hundreds of goats flying around them. No? And, and, and most, for sure, in the audience, there are some nature photographers and you know how frustrating could be you no know, work with nature because you have everything planned you go to the field to the perfect weather to the perfect hour to the perfect place but then they realize not to do what you are expecting you no know? so in this project i learned a lot to work with this frustration and also to be open to serendipity because sometimes you are planning to do a picture and when you are finding it's something completely different and, and, and well, then here is when you find the, the big surprises and the big prices, no? when you find this shape that you are not expecting. For example, this one. No? This one is a group of northern labwing, but in this case, they are flying over me. No? I was waiting for another bird, but suddenly I saw a group of, 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 of this bird, of northern labwing, and for any reason, they decided to fly over me because they Bears used to run away from you, no? And when, because it's seen from above, you can see this, this particular shape, no? And this shape for me is interesting because it could be a lot of things, no, in, the, in nature. So it's this kind of patterns that repeat in nature. And, and well, it's one of, of the aims of the project, no? To, to show these patterns that are invisible in, in the naked eye but sometimes it's pattern that we are familiar with because we find in other places in, in nature, no? Maybe because it's mathematic at the end. So, well, I start to... to take, to research with different pictures, with different birds. And, and one, uh, for example, Swift, one, one of my favorite birds because, well, for sure, you know they are. They spend most of the time in the sky. They sleep in the sky. They well, 
And, and because they fit in the sky, they do this erratic fly, almost chaotic, look, looking for insects no, in the air. Also, in the mating season, they chase each other. And, and so the, the, the flight is really complex. So at the beginning, I was okay doing a bird flying from A to B. But when the, the years have been passing, I was looking for more different uh, patterns. And for that, you, have, you need to look this complex behavior, no? So in, I, in this project, I feel like a curator. So I look from these choreographies and what I do is select a second of these choreographies, I am making visible. But I don't feel like doing nothing. I just look for these choreographies and make it visible. No, it's a concept that I like, that to be like a, a, bird, a bird flight creator. No? And for example, the, this crazy Taurus, it's uh, what I was coming from Monfraue in, in Extremadura, in the highway. I look a perfect, a giant V formation of cranes flying to north, immigration to Northern Europe. And I, I, I go outside the highway, I stop my car, I set the camera, everything ready to shoot this perfect V formation. And when I put, I make the click, the battery is, is, is low. No? So I could not do that. It's so frustrating. But what I happened during, I changed the battery. I look that this formation has break for any reason and they start to fly one around other in this total formation. And it's really surprising. I never seen before cranes doing that in a really clean way because sometimes birds fly like this, but sometimes there are another next to another, but it's used not to be in this perfect shape, no? So sometimes you get surprised. This is from the last year. Uh, I was proud of, of this image because I was looking for work with uh, um, uh, ravens for a long because ravens are really clever and they, they used to fly in social behavior. No? Sometimes they play in the air, they chase each other. It's really complex. I have found this hill around and the surroundings are really common. I feel with cows and it's not really photogenic, but I feel this small hill with this tree, and uh, and there and they, I found this uh, this pretty big com uh, uh, community of ravens, and 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 because use I, I think there are because the the little wind goes up and there are some current they like to play in the top of this hill, no, for any reason. So the shapes that they do are really rich and really different. I enjoy a lot spending time looking for this fly. No? Well, this is some of the behind the scene pictures that sometimes I like to share because, well, in my case, it's not the cliche of National Geographic uh, photographer that I spent months in the fields in, in with camo work. No, I used to work sometimes with my family because I have a little daughter and and I try I used to work with my car looking for the good places, stopping and, and waiting if the conditions are good and then I record when. And here it's it was raining and 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 it's it was it happened many things here. It's a good opportunity, no not to lose. So I used to work 90% of the times around Catalonia because it's where I am and when I where I know where to find birds and it's important to have that information. But but also I think for me in this project it's important to put in value the common birds and the birds that are around us. And most of the birds I work is a starling, swift, a seagulls. So in the end it's common birds. I have I never find this need to travel to Costa Rica or Madagascar and work in explosion. And for sure it will be amazing, but then it's not I don't really need that because this amazing shape and this amazing flight are, are really next to us and sometimes above my roof. One of the pictures that I published in National Geographic was taken in my roof on my flat in the middle of Barcelona. So sometimes it's more about know where the birds are that, that need to travel away, no? 
But one of the exception that I do is uh, when I know that I'm going to publish in National Geographic uh, because I want to find something different that I was used to do it. Uh, I decided to go there because it's a place that I love and I have been in other times. And I was looking for this contrast be between the dark, sharp rock and these tiny lines that it's done because the community of seagulls that, that nest in these cliffs, no? So I enjoy a lot working with this big amount of full mars and, and puffins that are nesting around the rock. But, and, and that, but also, as I mentioned before, I found surprises, no? For example, that there are some full mar nesting in the, in the, in the, in the waterfalls, no? So as, it's important to be open-minded and go farther than the picture that you have in my mind. Right? Because before travel to Iceland, I have this kind of pictures on my mind. And, and sorry, sometimes it's, I push the button, but it doesn't respond when I want. This is the picture that, that I have in my mind before travel. And this is a picture that I, I could never plan in before. No? So it's quite exciting to find. And, and the picture of behind the scene that I showed you before that I was in my umbrella, I, I, take in, I was taking this image because what, what happened is there are many herrings in, in, in the water and, and, the, um, and the, um, the, the term, the Arctic term are fishing them. And it's, this is why this, this shape. But not only that, the, the skua, that the, the darker lines in the picture uh, are chasing the, the, the terms to, to steal the herring from their beaks. No? So many things is happening in this, in this image. So yeah, but it's, I love to tell the story be, behind no? because many things is happening. And after the years, I have done, I have been focusing more in some, in some things, in some kinds of pictures that, that I, that I enjoy to take, no? Yeah. And, and now I'm joined to take in general, like three big groups of birds. Now it's the Swiss, the other is starlings that I'm going to take later. And also now I'm working, this is kind of soup project, no, inside the project, and also in a pigeon race. A few years ago, a friend of me sent me a video similar to have you have seen before, like a track where, where thousands of, pitch, of pigeons flying away at the same time. And when I say that, they never see before, I say, wow, I need to, to, to find what I can record that and, and, and make a, a picture, no? So I found that this is, this is a pretty common hobby. It's a, a pigeon race and that it's common around Europe. It's not super popular, but there are leagues in all the countries. And for example, in Catalonia, there are two leagues and they train from January to June. And this is one of the small um, tracks that they train. So what they do is they, they breed the pigeons, they take care of them. Every day they release to do little flights. When, but when they are trained, what, uh, what that ones that they want to be in competitions, they put in their cage in a track and they release like three kilometers ago. So most of them should should know how to come back to their homes, no? So every time they release far and far and far. So this is these images are, are from this this uh, in this minor the leak here, these trains. But um, everything starts with this first image that this is international pigeon race. So here there are not a small track. There are six big uh, trailers, and and with a hundred. Or, or tens of thousands, no, like uh, uh, 60, 70,000 pigeon races that, that is racing from uh, all around Europe. So every year around July, this is this happened around Barcelona. And well, it's, it's quite, it's, it only happens in a few seconds and everything needs to be set up. I used to, sometimes I have two, three cameras 
and and for example this last year they cancelled two, uh, two two times and i need to come back one or two days later because it's so crazy because sometimes they say no no there are a storm in france so we need to cancel or there are a, a big storm in in near german and i need to i need to we need to postpone to tomorrow so they are they are looking for the forecast all over Europe to, to decide if they are going to do that or no. no? So well, this is more behind the scenes. In this case, is from the, um, the migration of, of Tarifa in South Spain. It's a hot spot for migration. So the images, well, I look like this. No, this is a black kite. And this image, for example, it's a group of uh, griffon vultures taking also hot thermal currents, small vultures. And this is a colony of pale and pale swift, an alpine swift in Catalonia. And this is one of the images from, from this colony. This is from the last year. Um, we're talking of the project, this is a project of the Swift, no? As mentioned before, I love Swift because they fly in sometimes in a chaotic way or sometimes in this behavior way, no? In this case, they are, uh, in, for any reason, they fly in, in circles in, in late afternoon and sometimes in the morning. And it's when I try to get this, these patterns. And the other sub-project, maybe one of the most important for me, it's uh, related to starlings, no? As you know, the starlings in, in winter, they, they, they join in big groups, in, in small groups during the day and in big groups before they spend the overnight. So they, they look for a safe place to spend the night. In the case, in front of me, there are these canes that it's a typical place that when they feel safe to overnight. And what happens if, if at that time they are attacked by a house, they make this crazy and mesmerizing dance, no? So for me, it's a very interesting moment with many things happens and with when these crazy patterns appear. So every winter I try to look for these, these images and it's not always easy because I look for clear skies and not always the hawk attacks them, so not always it's relatively easy to find the starlings, but not always they do this dance, not only always with clear skates. So, well, it used to be far from Barcelona. So I need to do many travels there to try to, to get these images, no? So, well, this is a pretty a resume of, of my work of these last five, six years that, that I have done. And, and what I feel really lucky is since the first publish in 2015, many, many things happened. And, and it was really exciting because from the first publication, it gets better and, and, and it's really, really wide published. And I feel and I feel really, really happy about that. No? So my big goal was published, first of all, in the Spanish, in the Spanish edition of National Geographic with with 11 pages. And then when, when the, the, the international edition writes this, 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 this publication, they decide to, to publish by the same with a completely different uh, pictures one year later. This was in the January issue of, I'm not sure, 2018, I think so. January 2018, yes. And it was an eight pages publication, you know, and it was, well, it was a dream for me, you, know, as you suppose. And well, and, and in jail and, and in many, many places in Russia and Japan, in many places, my, my work has been published, and, and it's quite, quite crazy, you know, the things that have happened. It, and, and also, well, the exhibition, uh, uh, well, I have been exhibited in 10 countries. And, but, but for me, one of the most interesting things that happens is that many, how, how this project has 
get, have uh, connect with many people from different backgrounds. No? For example, from people that do tattoos to architects, from people that make dance or music, uh, two or three uh, classical composer, composer, uh, composers have been in touch with me, tell me that he, they have been inspired in my work to do some composition. So it was pretty amazing how, how people from different fields, from biology to math to, to dancer, has has connect with my project no so I, I i feel super super happy with that and and to collaborate with them from 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 this project and for example one one of the things crazy things that happens is that this last year i have been asked um uh, to to buy my the rights of several people to be in, in advertisement but they never tell me the, the where this advertisement the, this advertising is gonna to be show and it was in the super bowl no it was so crazy it, it was really quick but well just that but well it's it's quite it's quite um interesting no no that your work is in the in advertisement in super bowl and well then i have been in a few shows it's a popular show here in Spain. It's, you know, it's, it's not important. And well, um, after the, the the beginning that they, I did the project with, with a still photography, what I decided to do is, because I take video footage that this footage can, this footage can be re-read re again, but in, in, short, in a short film. So I decided to do a short film with this food this footage well this is the end of the presentation with my grandfather and my daughter and and what i want to show you now it's the project but in video footage that that it's also that i want to show you today it's also with, because with starting murmuration so now jacob is going to play this short film uh, and after the short film, um, you can ask me the questions. I'm going to stop talking. And uh, well, Jacob, when you want. Yes.
Okay, and we are back. So, Xavi, that was really an uh, interesting video. So I had the pleasure of seeing it just before. Uh, oh, the last couple of days, a couple of times. <laughs> so, and it's really, really fascinating how you get this stuff to just uh, sounds. I don't have any other words to move around coherently. So. Yeah, I have one question from Mass uh, Hagen, and it collides a bit with a question I, I thought of also. It's more technical. Uh, but the first question from Mass is how do you blend the frames? And, and I have a different question how do I actually. Uh, this is, if I understand correctly, you record video and then you extract images and stitch them together, right? So, yes, yeah. there, there are many ways to do that. It's, it's and I will be, going to be a little bored and long is, um, way when I do it, but I do it with an algorithm. Uh, and I changed since the beginning, I changed many times my workflow because I changed maybe I have using like six or seven different cameras. So, for example, I begin using Photoshop because I, at the beginning, I use like uh, no, at the beginning I use uh, like a regular video format. Then I, I use I import the video in Photoshop. Later I use a camera that I use DNGs, DNGs. Then I use this DNGs first of all with Camera Raw and then with with Photoshop. Later I use um, for example um, uh, video. How is this called? Um, um, also video softwares. Now, for example, I'm using DaVinci also. So it depends on the camera, it depends what I want to do. I found, uh, I used a different software, but I have no uh, only way to do this project. It depends wh which camera I'm doing, which resolution, and, and but, but this is the idea. At the end, is it's use an algorithm that what does it's um only use the pixels that it's not in the previous one so it's important because they keep the background as it is it's not increasing the luminosity or the darkness of the background so this is really helpful this is the key that helped me to move forward with the project and because for me it's really important that the images the final image it represents the real flight for me it doesn't work a technique where i need to cut and paste and make up the shape. No, for me, it's it's also like an, an, an I have the feeling that I'm working in analogical because I'm, I'm in the field. I could not take as many food as, as I can because it takes a huge amount of, of memory. So I use um, gigas or teras every time. And of, when I take, I have no idea what I what, what is in the footage. I can, I can have a bare idea that what I was re recording. But for example, now I'm working in the post-production of what I shoot in June or in May. So, so it's a, it, I not have been working on that. I just I have no time for that. But it's it's not it in in high resolution. But it's not not it's something that I do after work because yeah, and this is the why I have this feeling that I'm working like in analogical. No? Uh, this is you said right now you're working on the the, the the raw material you created back in June. It's uh, it seems like it's a serious time consuming way to work this one here. Uh, normally when we yeah, when we discuss videos in general it's just oh it's so much easier to take a photograph and do the post and so on and then we have video and you have to record one hour to take one minute but this is as I see it in a entirely different league of its own yeah exactly it, it's yeah. it's in the video league i, I yeah. really buy that uh, project that i just go there and click uh, okay i have maybe a few adjusted no color no no i i I'm really uh thinking to find another project that is really more easy <laughs> or, or or paint or something like this you know because i now i am the, the post-production take me too much time. And, and one of the, the, the idea of this project is to be a way of the computer. And it's not, <laughs> I know they get it because I need to invest many time in front of the computer also yeah. with this project. So, 
So. The next one will be with watercolor for sure. <laughs> so, so the point is to get away from the computer, but you punish yourself by having to sit more time with the computer. Like yes, computer. yes. Maybe not not as much as being only working in post production because I have the fun time in the field. But yes, yeah, yes, it takes me a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I have one question and one comment. Sus Frederiksen starts by saying, wow, respect. It's really inspiring. It's, it's beautifully inspiring. So Thank that you. was just a comment. And Thank Mas Hagen you. asks us again, which shutter speed are you aiming for when you rec record this? Is this slow-mo kind of thing? Is it a 60 minutes video? Is it 60 frames per second? Where are you going? Well, uh, this is a good question because it depends. If it's a slow bird, like a vulture, maybe with 20 and 30 bird, uh, frames per second, it's okay. When, when it's a regular bird with 60, it's okay. Uh, swift, sometimes with 120, it's not enough. So it depends because it depends. It, it's, it's, if I ask, I ask you, oh, what is a good speed for shoot uh, something in movement to not get blurred? No, because it depends of the speed that it is. Yeah. It depends the distance. Maybe a car in 200 meters, it's enough with 100 speed. But if the same car at the same speed, it's only at 10 meters, you need more speed for that. No, It also depends on the speed of the bird at the dis and the distance of this bird from you. No? Okay. So, so the short answer is fast enough to freeze them. Well, uh, not to freeze them because the freeze is the shutter speed. What I was looking for is all overlap one frame to next other, but it's not necessary. But for me, it's my style. Maybe when somebody wants to do that and it's not important for them if they say a lot of birds like okay. skaters jumping, you know, but my way to do that, I prefer that you could not recognize the bird. It's not will be not always like this, especially with Swift, but it's, it's what I try. Okay, I think I get it. I hope it was uh, you answered your question, Mess. Yes, Karsten? I have a question, yeah. Yeah, but it, when you say it was important for you that uh, that you didn't recognize the, the, the speech, um, then I would say last year when we had the exhibition in Tista, uh, we were walking around uh, just for fun, trying to recognize which spe species it was on the, on the <laughs> photos, and uh, it, it is it was very funny because I have uh, looked at birds for forty years, and it's a different, or different uh, kind of of looking at birds, and and very um, uh, exciting and 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 uh, surprising uh, <laughs> way to to look at them. So it, for me, it was uh, uh, yeah, it, it was a big ex experience to see that uh, behavior in 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 the photo, not the species, but but the behavior, and then from out from the behavior, just try to guess which kind of uh, species it, it was. Exactly, but for me, don't misunderstand me. I don't want that you don't know the species. What no. I want is you don't recognize the single bird. It's like find the the easy answer. Do you want that you? I will be happy if you could recognize the bird for the behavior. Yeah. Not exactly. not because you are looking the the, the bird. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. It's True. a swift. No, no. It's a, okay. It's like this kind of chaotic. Okay. It's a swift or it's a swallow. It's this kind of bird. It's a vulture or it's, it's a white star. No. It's. I, I love this kind of play. And and also when I love to play in the exhibition, it's that it's not possible in the magazines. Is when you go inside for if. For me, it's perfect is, is people don't know what they are they looking at. And sometimes it's, it happens that in the exhibition, when people come and, and don't know what they are coming, they make a first look and they are visiting and uh, like an abstract impressionist work. And so so they are enjoying the lines, the, cur the curves that, oh, okay, it's, it's lines, it's curves, it's nice. But that when they realize that they are real birds, they have the need to start to look at again the project, but with a different view, no? Okay, I'm yeah, looking yeah, real yeah. bad. So uh, for me, the, the key is that if you could go there without knowing what you are looking at, and then 
find the answer. Also, sometimes I look, mm -hmm. I have to have the answer, the white bears are looking at, but sometimes I prefer not next to the picture. So you can do this game and then you find the answer in the corner of the room. No? Sometimes I do that in the exhibition. It's not mandatory, but, but I love to do that, yeah. yeah. So it's the perfect yeah. example of uh, when a photograph shouldn't answer anything, it should ask more questions and so on, so people get more interesting in it, becomes more interesting. Exactly. For me, the most important is this, pro uh, in general, in art project, it's to be as open as, as possible. So I don't do a project for ornithology or for naturalists. I do for everybody. So if somebody has more a poetic background, could connect with these lines in a more emotional way. If somebody is more technician, will think how camera I use. If somebody is more naturalist looking for birds, like Karsten say, or I don't know. Or the important for me is as open as possible. That's that's why sometimes I don't like the project. I give you the answer in the title or how do you need to feel looking something. No, the important is if in different backgrounds will have different response in front of, of the images. So. Yeah. yeah, I had uh, someone ask me when she saw your picture, uh, is it manipulation? And I, I don't know if it is. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Money, of course, every picture is manipulation because you are changing from four dimension counting time to two dimensions. This is the biggest manipulation. You are changing, you are putting out two dimension. It's a super manipulation, no? And, and not, not only that, you are not taking pictures randomly. You are choosing one part, a little part of the reality to show to the rest of the world. So thanks. Uh, all the photography is manipulation because if not manipulation means it's something um, with no soul. But if manipulation is that I put the lines that I like, no. For me, it's important to put boundaries and the boundaries is if the bird starts looking like this, this is the real lines. If, if the... I know if there are a tree behind, I leave the tree behind. So I don't put a landscape more beautiful because I like. No, it's it's not like a collage. The important is no, it's not, not a, a collage. I show, I only make visible something that it's it's there. Yeah. Cast nice. Have, yeah. No, I just uh, ask if you if you have something more in the. In the, uh, are people asking something? No, not not currently. I still have some questions uh, or a comment. One of them was it correctly understood you primarily shoot this in the area you live you live in, right? Correct. And then, yeah, yeah, ninety percent. It's around Catalonia, around like two hours driving. Ninety percent. It's two hours driving around. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's an interesting thought because. Um, Roughly three years ago, I was in a mentorship with an American photographer and he drilled into us the entire team that you need to find the things that's interesting around where you actually live. Because the first comment people wanted to say was, I want to go travel, I want to go shoot different cultures and, and so on and so on. Uh, and it was a long talk we had about that subject. And then I was at a short webinar with Sebastian Liste, a Spanish photographer also. And, and he said something similar that a lot of interesting things is actually going on, especially with Corona and stuff, where you live. Uh, and that, that actually spending time working in your local community is a different thing. And it's more interesting that you actually think of uh, instead of just going out and traveling. I once made a long term project in an office, uh, office space that I worked on for six months. And when I was done, yes, it was interesting, but I had, for me, it was difficult to find it. But then I suddenly, I saw it and then I could follow the traces around. And it was a place where I actually went five days a week. <laughs> so, so it's, in, it's interesting that you could find interesting stuff right at home. Um, I, 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 I mean, I'm sure that there, if you will, if we want to do a personal project and share with people, should be something interesting. And something interesting should be something with soul and with truth. 
And you only could share things with truth if you really know them and you really do talk about something that you really know what you are talking about. And, and but, but what happens is when we are traveling, we are so happy and we are so excited that we want to take pictures of everything and share with the humanity, but the humanity doesn't care because we have seen many times this kind of picture and for sure are exotic pictures and for sure the the other parts of the world picture are, are nice because remember how beautiful is the world how different are the culture but behind that there are nothing because there are, there are nothing more than somebody excited about new things that are seeing and so you can dig deeper than that so yeah, yeah. for me it's important in every project that no that, it, that you really need to know what you are talking about. Yes, thank you. Uh, Swiss Flags and ask, do you have a next project planned and what is it? If you want to talk about that. Well, I'm all the time researching for project. Maybe I, since I begin in ornithography, I start four or five projects that I, I kill it. <laughs> because <laughs> it's important to start uh, and sometimes it's um, I don't know the translation, but it's a path with not exit, you know? So it's yeah. important to begin things with no fear. And just now I begin something related to this project because I, I not mentioned that I could apply to this technique to everything because it's something that really could be, I don't know, how look kites, how look planes, how look... I could get crazy applying this to everybody, but what will happen if I became this person, the photographer specialized in this technique. I don't want to become a technician because I was technician 15 years ago no, with my, I, I don't want to become a technician. So I like, uh, like make a promise myself not to do that, not to apply to everything. For sure I will get nice and, and pictures to apply to to uh, well, to to well, I don't know to prices, but but it's not my challenge because it will be nothing behind. But the the aim of using this, this technique is show the beauty of natural movement. But it's the natural movement; it's not only in birds. So I I do some tests underwater and also with insects, and I, I think it could be interesting also to show that. And for me, also challenging to learn more about this kingdom, no? Because it's related and I, 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 it's comfortable with me and it's quite different because I will not be happy doing something really similar but with other characters. But well, now I, I'm really excited because I'm with something around that, that it's related, but it's pretty different and I hope in few months, I will show the first ones. And also I'm working in the book that it's almost done. But yes, I hope I will, it will be out in some months. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually my next question. Are you preparing a book for this one? Yeah, yes, I know yes. we do big wall, wall uh, uh, prints, uh, but I'm a, I'm a book person. I love to sit with a book <laughs> and read it, uh, read or read. You can call it what you want, but look at it for a long, long time. So. Uh, no, no, I, I, I also love books. I have many photo books, but, but I have no, not done before because for when you do a book, you cannot put more images in. No? So I was waiting the right moment that I, okay, now I really think I have a solid volume of work to do a book. And now it's my point. No? I feel now comfortable with the picture that I have. And of course, I, I will keep working on, on this project. But now I think it, it's a good moment to do that, yeah. And maybe in the future, if I want to do another, let's see, no? But, but now I'm ready to do that. Yeah, uh, that was one of the things I was also was thinking about. You said you started with this, roughly you got a breakthrough in nine uh, in the 2016. Yeah, so yeah, was... 2015, but 2016 was the first publication. But okay. working that in 2015, yeah. And if I take a look at your resume, you have had a lot of publications since that. Yeah, so it must really have been some kind of snowball, just running and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And and now you're well, still. Yes, it, it has been like different stages. No, so there are yeah. seasons that it's a little now. Now I feel now that I'm well. 
I feel now, for example, I have only one publication in the future now, but I am a tour of talks around Catalonia in an important like museum. And yesterday I have asked to be in maybe in one of the most important museums in Barcelona, but only in a group exhibition. But, but the, the problem is do you get used to this level to questions uh, and, and, and suggestions and sellings. So when sometimes you have, you have a couple of weeks with no offers and with nothing, you get down. No? <laughs> <laughs> and when I, but it's, it's something that I, I'm only, well, the important is to manage no? this, these peaks of works and these valleys of, of, of emptiness. Yeah. No? Yeah, the up times, uh, up times and down times. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's always difficult when you do some something and you have these periods where no one want to talk to you. What happened? Yeah. And then suddenly, as about fifty people who want to talk to you in a yeah. way. So, so this happens. Yeah, it happens yeah. to me many times. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say, oh, "Okay, this is over. It's it's the end." I, I I'm going I'm going to need to look for a proper job. <laughs> like this <laughs> and then something extraordinary happens and oh, no. keep on that yeah now i have it, this is personality eh? it's personality it's my lack of self-confidence maybe i think uh, that that's a, an artist trade yeah like being confident <laughs> in anything just deciding that this doesn't work and it will go down in the in the yeah, yeah. and we'll survive 40 more days and then it's done uh, no matter how it looks in, in the book yeah. so um, <laughs> i have it, it's a pattern i've heard before <laughs> many many times so, yeah, yeah um, it's common so she has a clarifying question so it means that you are um very um up to uh, very excited interested in patterns that's the main focus when you when you shoot it's the patterns you are actually interested exactly in. exactly yeah. this is, I, I'm more interested in patterns that for look for different species. I'm not making a list of different birds, no. Because sometimes the same bird give me really different patterns. For example, uh, the, uh, the swift and the starling. What I want, I love to work with them is the different behaviors that do these different patterns, no? So, uh, so my, my now, my, my challenge if I want to work in new pictures that look different, it's okay, what kind of bird will give me a new pattern, no? So I start to work, okay, maybe this bird flying this way when they are mating, or if you wait to the migration, maybe these groups could fly in this way, or maybe this bird that I fly in this condition, maybe what happened if you record in another condition. So. Now my creativity goes in this way, not try to think about different species doing different behavior to get new patterns. Super, thank you. Uh, just a yeah. comment, if, there, if there's any more questions, please fill, send them in now because we'll be, I think we'll be slowing, slowly winding down. So we have two minutes for questions. Yes, Carsten. Yeah, yeah, I, I would uh, like to, uh, I hope to see you in Denmark, Sabi. Uh, when you are, uh, um, when you have some pictures from underwater to show us, then uh, <laughs> I think you should uh, visit the festival again. Yeah, it was it's so crazy underwater. I try, I try, but I need a tripod underwater. Then the, uh, the it's it's an, the fishes doesn't move so easy and the contrast with the background it's not the same that with birds so it's if i was looking for a more simple project no it's the opposite it's <laughs> even more complicated and challenging and the cameras of course the if you need a big resolution video camera underwater wow it's super expensive uh -huh. yeah no 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 but i i think it's in my destiny it's to make it difficult no to make me a difficult <laughs> <laughs> project Maybe, maybe it's my style. But I hope you 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 should you should not spend that much time at the computer then, make the difficult things out in the field, not in front of the computer. Yeah, I hope so. Well, now it's the last time I, I a friend of mine is is helping me with that, that it's an improvement. 
Mm. So when one part of the of the process that it's mechanical, he's helping with this because if not, I will I have no time mm. to be in front of your computer so much hours during all the days. So yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, do we have uh, no more questions? I just, I just I just have Sus that says thank you thank you for an inspiring meeting here online and best of luck forward. She's looking forward to see more. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you everybody to be there and thank you Karsten and Jacob for yeah. reminding me for this talk. Thank you to you, Jack. Uh, Sally, it was a pleasure for us to hear about your your, your work. Yeah. So thank you. I hope the festival have a succeed. Yeah. Uh, Karsten, I have one question before we log off here. Uh, when? How long is it? that we can see service pictures in Tistel Gamle Rådhus. The last, uh, the last day is the 3rd of October. Okay. Uh, yes. At two o'clock, we're closing down. Yes. So when photo festival ends, is it that? Can't wait. Yeah, can't, sorry. I just remember yeah. the old name. <laughs> it's the new name, I forgot. Yeah. Super, and catch a bowl says thank you to, to Savi. But that said, I think I will uh, stop the streaming from now and thank you all for looking, dropping by. Okay. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.